All right. Um, hi, everyone. This is Jen again from the program team and also from these TPS community calls that we're going to speak a little bit about. So some of the attendees here today may have also attended a series of TPS community calls through the past five months. A few of us who have been involved in those calls are going to take a moment to reflect on them now through a facilitated conversation. The unconference organizers thought it might be meaningful for this community calls group to share some of the thoughts that have evolved on those calls about what community means to us as a group of professionals. You'll notice as we go through this conversation that we're reading out a fair bit of what we're saying. We wanted to be really concise with the time that we have and not repeat each other. So we've drafted a lot of our speaking points in advance. So thank you for your understanding on that. If you have any questions about the things we're talking about as we speak today, please put them in the chat. We might not have time to get to all your questions today, but they'll help us figure out the topic and topics and structures of future community calls. You can find out about those future calls by signing up for our listserv. And I think someone is going to drop a link to sign up for that listserv into the chat. We really hope that this conversation today will make our process for organizing these calls more transparent, including the non-hierarchical planning structure that we've aspired to. Community call participants have been encouraged in whatever role they play to jump up and jump back as they have time and energy to help out and take part. We think that that model is really complementary to the unconference model, and we think it's interesting to look at those community calls as an exploratory model for working this way within our profession more broadly. Overall, we were really surprised by the urgent need for these calls expressed by the feedback we received when we started having them. And this in itself was thought provoking as it caused us to think about the level of need for collaboration and community building in our field. Hi, I'm Anne. I'm one of the call planners and um, uh, thanks for joining us. In the third week of March, when the scope of the pandemic was becoming clear, leaders in the Instruction and Outreach Committee of RBMS, along with other collaborators, began discussing how to support a community that would not only need to quickly pivot to online teaching, but would also need to think possibly about strategies for primary source literacy, instruction, and learning in the long term. Our intentions were to create a space for collective crisis management, uh, as well as for ongoing mutual support. From the beginning, we wanted this effort to serve beyond the professional organization memberships to the entire community of practitioners who teach with primary sources. This is Rachel Mack. Um, so when deciding what to name these calls, we settled on TPS community calls. Like the TPS Unconference, knowing that the calls had attracted educators from a range of professions, we talked together about how to define this set of people. In choosing TPS community, we define this as the widest subset of people who teach with primary sources. It doesn't matter the role. It doesn't matter the type or topic or format or level. Just people who understand the power of primary sources in our world and whose work involves connecting others to them in an educational environment. You don't need to have it in your title or even in your position description. Chances are, if you're here, you think about teaching with primary sources. You don't need to belong to a professional organization or attend any conferences. Many of the call planners come from the library and archives world, specifically that in higher education in the United States. Many of the current organizers count either the Society of American Archivists or the Rare Book and Manuscript section of ACRL as their professional home but we recognize this community is much wider than that. And we think we're even stronger and of better service when we work together across the spectrum of primary source literacy environments and audiences. We held our first call on March 25th as a sort of open topic discussion call. This one had 75 attendees and was met with good feedback and requests for more. A few of us stayed on Zoom after that call to discuss the potential for another one, and the pattern emerged of planning the next call right after the present one. We had weekly calls for a while and then went to every two weeks. 
And RBMS IOC and SAA TPS leaders, along with other volunteers from a wide variety of backgrounds and professional affiliations, hosted, planned, and organized these calls. Early on, we polled the call attendees to see what they wanted from these events. We learned that 85% of our attendees came from academic libraries and other institutions represented included government archives, museums, and K-12 schools. We learned that most of our attendees were interested in sessions focused on planning for the fall semester, on learning new tech tools, and on using data and digital humanities tools in teaching. We learned that um, our community preferred calls every other week, and so we adapted to fit that need. And we also learned that the community was willing to share their own knowledge. 10% of respondents said that they were willing to present something and 41% said that they might be willing to present if they had some more info. We also pulled on the format of the calls and learned that attendees preferred informal presentations paired with group discussions, but also liked guided breakout rooms and Pecha Kucha style presentations. In total, we received feedback from 116 people. Hi everybody, this is Heather. Um, Medford. So the calls varied in format, with some being devoted to commiseration and support for each other, with others focused more on demoing tech tools or online teaching techniques and approaches, and even once a game to help us all plan for the fall. Um, our average number of attendees over the calls was um, 125 over these 13 calls so far. And this high degree of interest spurred on our work and really motivated us to keep working together. Um, each call had at least five or six roles that needed to be filled, a moderator, a chat moderator, a note taker, a communications coordinator, and other wranglers. And the, the definition for those roles actually kind of evolved a bit over time too. And of course, that's not including the presenters for each call when we had presentations. Uh, in, in all, a rotating group of about 30 volunteer organizers emerged in these after call planning sessions with about 15 or 20 taking, a part, taking part in this um, planning work each week. And these loosely organized volunteers came, just like Jen had said earlier, from the same range of concentrations um, and organizational affiliations and professional identities. And we each came to build together to build these calls in a collaborative and spontaneous way. Uh, each volunteer organizer contributed in some way, whether it was creating documentation for the effort or reaching out to contacts to request a presentation, um, developing ideas or hosting or um, uh, many other contributions. Each call came together in about two weeks or less. Um, the fastest turnaround was six days. Um, in addition to the planning call, we used a Slack channel to, um, to communicate with one another and we sometimes had to hold a second planning meeting to wrap things up. Each call was planned in service to the larger TPS community by members of that community. So the registration for this unconference has blown away all expectations as we've already, as we've already said, nearly 1200, maybe there are 1200 at this point um, of us are coming together over the next two days to learn from each other, all because we know the power of teaching with primary sources and we want to develop that in ourselves and in our institutions. This is a larger community around teaching with primary sources than has ever been convened at a conference or workshop. And it shows how large the community really is when we don't have to worry about professional affiliations or travel money. There's real power in that size. And we are hoping that working together over the next few days, we can help our, see ourselves and our work in a way that will help us all get through the next challenging period in a supported and supportive community. Before we dive into discussion, the planners would like to thank all of the presenters and everyone who pitched in to create these calls and to thank the attendees who made them successful. Thank you for your willingness to contribute and for embodying the spirit of collaborative creation we are hoping to promote. So now that we've given you a bit of context for the work that this group of, of people have been doing on these community calls, I'm going to pose a series of questions and invite some of the organizers from the community calls to share their thoughts. So first of all, I would love for you to share how did you get involved with the TPS community calls and with the planning group? 
How did you go from listening to participating and how have you sustained your involvement? So I'll get started. Hi everyone, my name is Claire. I use she, her pronouns. Um, so the TPS community calls allowed individuals to engage and participate in ways that are meaningful and whatever that means for the individual. Um, I found my way to the TPS community calls through Archivists at Home with the Texas Digital Library and the Society of Southwest Archivists webinar back in April. Um, and since then, I've gradually increased my involvement and participation with the planning calls. Um, that was a decision that I made based on the friendliness of the entire group and a need to feel connected to my profession. Um, I wanted something really active that would ground me in this work that I was doing remotely. I started by being on the audience end of the calls and stayed after for the planning calls, probably after the second meeting. Um, I increased participation by moderating a chat during a community call and then somehow got involved in planning this unconference. Um, frankly, there were so many meetings happening that I think I sometimes just joined a meeting because I couldn't remember what the topic was and ended up volunteering some way in a capacity. Um, but this was okay because the vibe of the group made this somewhat chaotic participatory method really fruitful and also really fun. Hi y'all, I'm Kasha and I use she, her pronouns. My involvement in TPS has been incremental and I had heard of TPS originally through RBMS and then a friend mentioned that she was visiting some of the calls. So I realized I'd been looking for a community in the field, but had been struggling to find engagement in work and in professional organizations as a part-time worker and recent graduate. So at the end of April, I stayed after a call to observe the planning meeting and just get a feel for the group. I really quickly realized that TPS was not only a safe space to voice my thoughts, but an actively encouraging community to share ideas and offer feedback. I really loved that people were very honest with where they were at, both emotionally and professionally, and members of the group helped build my own confidence in my involvement. Folks listened to and then put into action ideas I had thrown out there, and they encouraged me to be as involved as I wanted to be myself. So I did. So I started speaking in meetings and taking notes and offering to moderate. And I loved, something I really loved about this was that folks of all career stages were learning from one another and also with one another. So I was never made to feel like a token recent graduate. I was never dismissed or pitied for being an early career person, but I was seen as a meaningful member of the community whose thoughts and labor were valued just like anyone else's. Hi everyone, I'm Allison. Uh, so I never intended to join the planning calls, um, but during the first webinar that I attended at the end of May, Adriana uh, announced, who's the host, announced that anyone who wanted to help plan future calls should stick around after the event. So I decided to join pretty much on a whim. So despite the fact that the group had been working together for months, a newcomer like myself was still welcome to provide perspective and contribute ideas. And during that first meeting, established members of TPS and the profession asked those of us who are new to TPS and the profession for our opinions and then immediately acted on them. There were no barriers to, to joining aside from showing up. My presence is my qualification. While we're collaboratively flattening the curve by staying home, TPS also allows us to flatten hierarchies within professional organizations. Uh, yeah, so as one of the members of the group who initiated this effort, I think it's safe to say that things happened as we'd hoped. Um, people participate and there's a need, but it's, um, it's been just completely a gratifying surprise, as Jen mentioned at the beginning, just how much need could be met and how many community members have been willing to jump in and make these calls happen over and over again. And that a more like, democratic, collaborative, and loosely formed cohort could work. Um, to these modes. And also, I just want to say how fulfilling it has been to be a part of all of this, um, at least for those of us who are in this conversation and chose to step up today to speak about it. Um, it's also been, from my perspective, just that simply wonderful <laughs> to step back in my um, involvement over time rather than increase in participation and to feel utterly confident in doing so because the people who stepped up, some of who are talking here today and others who aren't here, um, you know, have just stepped up so big and so well. Thanks, everyone. 
Next, I would love to hear from you about how the structure and flexibility and development of the planning model that was used provided opportunities for professional growth and development. And on the flip side, I'd love for you to reflect on the downsides of that model. So the flat non-structure of the planning model, uh, among other things, has yielded for me the most productive, collegial, enriching, and rewarding professional situation I've ever experienced. I think hierarchy can inhibit organic growth and exploration and creativity. And without that here, we have been able to put together something kind of magical with the feel of driven, like-minded people with the same goal of service to each other, working rapidly and collegially. Um, the rapid turnaround of the calls um, and the rapid production arrangements um, and the on-the-fly technical circumstances and tools that we were all learning together um, required loosening of traditional um, methods of committee work. Um, the value of equal consideration for ideas has been present since the beginning, and it allows for all of us to learn from each other. And the informal sort of throw it together vibe allowed for a building process where everyone could contribute at the level or point that they wanted to without pressure. The fast pace required the putting aside of egos and territoriality. Uh, we can't get attached to something if it's moving very quickly. And so that helped everyone develop flexibility and team spirit during a time when that was really needed. Um, we made big, bold jumps together, uh, conceptually and in our planning, and we weren't afraid to reroute or change plans quickly if something wasn't working. There were contributions from each according to strength or capacity. For example, our planner, uh, Adriana, required documentation for herself in the moderator role, which she then shared forward. That was adapted and became the template slash structure slash safety net for the entire endeavor. And this was a real, uh, a, a good real time um, reminder for other parts of our professional lives about the importance of documentation. Others offered to network, uh, use their personal connections, run meetings, take notes, um, and a spirit of volunteerism pervaded everything. Um, and one of the most remarkable things about these calls, I mean, just to stop and think about it, is that for five or more roles per call for 13 calls in a row every time, amazingly, when has that ever happened? Every time someone stepped up and offered to take a role. Um, and that's kind of remarkable in my professional experience and led to professional growth for everyone involved. Hi, um, I'm Cynthia, I use she, her pronouns. Um, for me, I really found the structure energizing uh, because it meant I could jump in right away and start making contributions. If even at the start, I didn't really understand what it was I was jumping into. Um, I may have shown up in the first call thinking I was logging into something else, but it all worked out fine. Um, so no membership fees, no applications, just show up and you're on the team. Um, this flexibility of structure specifically meant a lot to me when I got word that I was being temporarily reassigned to a different state agency. Um, to avoid furloughs, my state shuffled some workers between agencies to do services when they were needed. So I had to step away from the library altogether for a while. Um, that meant that I had to step away from, from community calls for a bit. But because of the structure, I was able to do so without feeling guilty and without leaving anyone to lurch. Um, so it's been really meaningful to have a place where I can contribute as possible in a kind of pickup manner. Hi, I'm Julie. On the downside, it is hard to call a community that is as racially and ethnically homogenous as that of the TPS community calls, truly welcoming for all. Our method of building community organically and asking for volunteers for roles has also meant avoiding the hard and sustained work necessary to build a diverse group of practitioners and presenters in a primarily white field. The TPS community calls have also revealed an apparent issue with the homogeneity of TPS practitioners specifically, as opposed to, say, archivists and curators. The work of diversifying this group will require proactively reaching out to people, including those who may not currently be in the RBMS SAA TPS community. We acknowledge that our planning group has failed our colleagues of color in this way. As we move forward into the next phase of the TPS calls, we plan to make diversifying the planners, presenters, and audiences for the calls a top priority. We invite practitioners of color to join us, and we welcome critiques and input geared towards addressing this shortcoming in our model. 
Yeah, thanks, Julie. Absolutely. This is Heather again. Um, and we've also heard, um, we've definitely heard that people struggle with this, me um, this method of rapid planning and can and have felt lost in the information stream. Um, Claire, who's monitoring chat right now, so I'm going to speak for her. Um, she mentioned getting lost on the Slack more often than she'd like to admit and finds the number of Google Docs uh, overwhelming. We can imagine that someone wanting to join the group could be turned off by the myriad links and chats and just by the nature of the planning work discussions and the pace more generally. Um, and we definitely see this, uh, we the planners definitely see this as an area where we are looking to mature our practices as a cohort. We're finding our way toward that maturity and would like very much to move from kind of a crisis response to a more sustained mode and hope to be able to devote more, more space and labor to pretty crucial organizational tasks that are important, whether it's a loose or formal group. Um, so on the flip side, um, the TPS call planning structure gave Adriana Flores, again, she's monitoring the chat, so I'm vocalizing her thoughts here. Um, so they gave her a, pl a blueprint for an online event planning um, in COVID just in general. She used the structure to collaboratively create an online series at her own institution. It was titled Race Matters, Continuing the Conversation. And it's a weekly virtual space for campus and community members to have interdisciplinary discussions about race. The event series needed to come together really quickly and she was able to use our structure and a lot of that documentation that she herself provided for that structure, but that others contributed to as well. She was able to use that as a springboard and instantly have an impact at her own institution too. So that's great news. Thanks everyone. How would you all say that the origin of this group differed from the formation of other outreach efforts that you've seen or been part of? And why do you think that this is important for the future? Uh, where do you see all of this going from here? Hi, I'm Danielle. My pronouns are she, her, um, and I'll take a stab at this um, question. Um, but one thing that I had struggled with in the quote unquote before times was finding ways to get involved with professional organizations um, like SAA and RBMS and finding community outside of my institution. Um, the main reason for this was traveling to conferences involved financial and time commitments that I just wasn't always able to make. Um, the great thing about this community in particular is how large and small it can be. All are welcome to join regardless of affiliation, and you don't need to be an active and vocal participant in order to be a part of it. There's a lot of space for people to talk and to listen to people from different regions and different institutions and different places in their careers. I would honestly imagine that even as people return to physical workspaces um, from being in the remote environment, we are still going to have struggles um, in places that we need advice. So this group will still have a really important place in that environment. I know that now that I've become part of the group, um, I'm much more likely to make space in my schedule to accommodate meetings um, rather than trying to get involved or actively later on since I've seen the benefits of um, being part of this community. Hi, this is Kasia again. And the ability to immediately jump in or to just jump in whenever was different than anything I had experienced. Um, as I mentioned before, I have struggled to deeply engage in uh, workplaces or professional orgs, either due to missing a narrow uh, application window or simply not being selected for committee work that time around. And so TPS has really worked for me because I didn't have to apply to become involved in planning. And I also don't have to pay, pay high dues as a new member. Um, the barriers to entry for me at least have been quite low, meaning basically having an internet connection and showing up when I am available to according to time and emotional capacity. Hi, this is Allison again. Um, TPS has offered an approach to service that is democratic, embracing the fact that adjusting to our new virtual environment means that it does not matter if you've organized uh, 50 conferences or events or none, uh, we're all learning together. The productivity of the leveling experience in this virtual space confronts the assumptions that guide more formal groups. On the other hand, we don't want to support the harmful idea that we need to remain productive during a pandemic. So I think it's important to add that TPS has not been about productivity for the sake of productivity, but about community collaborative problem solving and personal agency within the profession. Yeah, that's a great point, Allison, too. Um, this is Heather again. 
the organic way that this group started is incomparable to other efforts that have required years of building and advocating for organizational support, um, some of those that I've been a, a, a big part of. Um, so by point of comparison, I can say, yes, this is incomparable to other things that I've, I've worked on, um, including sort of charge writing and getting approval and committee formation timelines. I think um, to people who've not been intimately involved with the calls and the planning, it probably looks very messy from the outside or maybe just from the inside too. Um, but the idea that um, the very lack of all that overhead, it's just allowed us to dive right in, try one approach, evaluate, try another, et cetera. And that's been a real benefit as people have said. Um, so if it's messy, it's a really thoughtfully organized and well-loved and well-tended to mess. <laughs> um, and that's probably what I see as one of the most important things going forward to lift the veil um, and work towards making it less frenetic um, and through that more inclusive and sustainable and somehow without losing the benefits of the freedom um, and democratic approach that, that's been going on. Now I'd like to invite some of you to share how your involvement with the TPS community calls has impacted your professional position in your life. Yeah, um, this is Rachel. So the calls, both in participating in them and helping to organize them, they've given me so many <laughs> ideas and different structures for so many different things that I could bring back to my institution and adapt. Um, and whether that's the logistics of moving people from Zoom room to Zoom room, um, or just figuring out how to move in-person activities online. Another thing that I've noticed is it's made me a lot more confident when sharing these ideas, both in the TPS community and back at my own institution, not just because I've experienced them, but also because I now have met someone who has done that thing. So I can reach out to them and ask them um, questions about it and get their thoughts and help problem shoot. Hi, this is Cynthia again. And um, just to kind of reflect on what Rachel said, um, participating in these planning calls has given, has given me kind of that thing that I've been hunting for, which is the community practitioners. Um, working together as a team to make something happen means that now there's a group of folks I feel comfortable with going to with a teaching question, um, big or small. And I imagine most of us are in a position where we're the only one or one of the only ones at our institution doing this kind of teaching. So having a group of people in a similar position to reach out to um, is a huge, huge boon to me. Um, it's exactly what I need when I face down an instruction season like this fall, um, which is nothing like I've ever imagined I'd see. Um, more specifically, I kind of one on the ground action that we worked together on was creating an email template to send to faculty um, so with the huge change in how instruction is going to be delivered, I was struggling with how to communicate with faculty that we are still able to provide instruction um, and what that might look like. Um, so again, an ad hoc group of people from this community just up and made something that we could all use and tweak as needed. This is Anne again. Um, this experience has pretty much become my ideal way of working. I'm spoiled for it now. Uh, I leave these calls energized by fresh ideas, by collaborative spirits, and by plans for moving forward toward a positive outcome that serves both my professional service and my daily practice needs. It's a way of working that allows for fluid, uh, collective, multi-directional mentorship um, for those at all stages of their careers, and um, now that is a way of working that I prefer. This is Julie again. As a more seasoned teaching librarian, <clears throat> I coordinate an instruction program that is always focused on face-to-face -face active learning in the classroom. I was overwhelmed by the idea of not only teaching myself how to plan and deliver online learning, but providing support for the librarians and archivists who teach in my department. The TPS community calls gave me models for how to approach teaching online, examples of tools that I could learn, and resources that I could share with my colleagues. It gave me confidence that I could plan and deliver online instruction and set a tone in our department of being accepting of the mistakes that we would make along the way. 
How has vulnerability and bravery played a role for all of you in the TPS community calls? So this is Claire again. Um, the TPS community has been so supportive um, verbally and actively reassuring participants and validating questions and concerns that we all bring um, about practice, theory, and just working during these extremely trying times. Um, it's always tough to ask questions of your supervisors, but it takes a different kind of bravery to ask questions of strangers, especially those active and established in the field. And on the flip side, um, it takes a bravery to be one of those active and established um, members in the field and admit that you're at a loss. Um, the people in this group play a huge role in the sense of care and professional safety as well. I think um, simply admitting that this is a space that supports vulnerability is a powerful thing. There's no artifice that this group has all of the answers. It, take, it takes courage to admit that we don't know the next step. And the fact that this group has intentionally said, bring your questions, your fears, and your concerns is unlike any other professional or academic group that I know. This is Danielle again. Um, just to build on what Claire was just saying, we were really very vulnerable together, which is a huge blessing in any setting, but especially a professional one. Um, it's so hard to say, I don't know, but when it, it becomes easier when you have someone else stepping up to the plate saying, hey, I don't know either, but I'm happy to figure it out with you. Um, this type of environment really helps to fight imposter syndrome for both participants and presenters, um, cultivating the freedom to let ideas flow from person to person in a very, very safe environment. Um, there's almost like a show and tell like aspect to the meetings, um, kind of like someone's coming up and saying, I am sharing this information with you because I found it interesting and effective and I think you might too, rather than them coming in pretending that they are the expert who has all the answers. Um, because people are willing to share where things went wrong or didn't work out as originally intended, they then open the door for more people to be vulnerable with their work too. And each presenter sets the stage for the next person to share their genuine experience in the service of letting the larger group learn together. Thank you. I'm now going to invite Rachel to reflect a little bit for us on uh, how collaboration has played a role in all of this, and then to share some questions with us that we hope will guide you through the coming days and through your, your thinking as a professional in this field. Yeah, thanks so much, Jen. Um, so this isn't even coming from me as an unconference co-lead. Um, it's really coming from me as someone who has participated in these community calls. The entirety of the TPS community calls from the planning to the execution of each of those calls has been a collaboration. We all have had ideas on workflows, topics, and approaches that created an environment where each person and their ideas have value no matter how experienced they are or where they work. We support one another, not just in our work, but in our mental well-being. We're mindful that we're doing this during a time of global crisis. For us, it wasn't about proving productivity or getting any of our names out there. It was really about coming together, not just as organizers, but as a community made up of each and every person who is on one of those calls. I think that the community calls, the TPS Collective, and even this unconference will prove to be invaluable in creating a thriving community of professionals at all levels who teach with primary sources in so many different ways. It has broken down the traditional barriers. It's brought together academic librarians, faculty members, archivists, museum professionals, K through 12 teachers, and graduate students of all of these professions. It's allowed us to get past the constraint of that funding and the lack of funding creates. Before this, you were maybe an RBMS person or an SAA person or a fill in the blank person, but not anymore. We haven't allowed these affiliations to divide the community and we're certainly not about to do so. We are all here because we want to learn from one another and share what we didn't know would be useful, but proves to be inspirational to others. Together, 
we're laying the foundation of finding ways of continuing this collaborative spirit with our present and future colleagues. We fully acknowledge that this community as it stands currently is still very new and quite far from perfect as Julie has mentioned. But we hope that it will become a place where everyone feels welcome and valued. And we hope that you'll join us in making this happen. For our colleagues, both new and established, the best way to demonstrate that we are all welcome here and that everyone's ideas have value is to model that at every opportunity and in every interaction we have. Find ways to work with one another and with colleagues at other institutions, not just here at the unconference, but in the daily practice of your profession. So as we move forward together throughout this unconference and in the future, please ask yourself, what do you want to learn from this community? How will you foster new collaborations both now and in the future? Where, why are collaborations with other professionals both in and across disciplines valuable to you? What are ways beyond what has already been done, including the unconference, the TPS listserv, the community calls, and the TPS collective that would better support any future TPS collaborative efforts? And finally, how can we continue working together to support each other? Thank you so much, Rachel. I just want to check in with the folks who are moderating the chat. I know there were some questions that we managed to answer along the way in the chat, um, but I'd love to know if there are any other questions that have come up that we can answer now. Hi, this is Adriana. I have a question for Cynthia that came up that I just want to make sure Cynthia sees. So there was a, a question that says, we've started to think about an email template to faculty at my institution. Is there any chance you could share that with folks at Georgetown? Yes, um, I, I sent in a message privately, but I'm happy to share it with anybody. Again, it's not mine. It was collaboratively done. Um, what's the best way of getting it to folks? I could, I could, I have, yeah, I have no followers. We can share it on the listserv or we could put it on the Google Doc. Yeah, I can send it, I'll send it to the listserv, how about that? And then I just see one other question and it came up when we were talking about downsides of the structure that we're using. And this person mentions access to tech, especially from home, has that been an issue? Um, so that's just another question question for us to think about um, access and availability for people to participate. So if anyone has comments on that, I'd love to hear them. Adriana, I don't know if anybody had a good answer for it, but it has definitely, this is Claire, by the way, it has definitely been written down as a um, topic for future calls and like something to consider. So just, it's not lost in the ether. Um, and I'll just add that I um, like caused a tech issue for someone on one of the calls where we went to separate sessions where we each um, had a discussion with folks who work with the same kind of audience as us. And I was facilitating the, the discussion, um, the folks who work with audiences who are not primarily at their own institution. Um, and I, I do that um, all the time. I'm working with folks at other schools. And um, so we then are usually at the mercy of their technology and not ours. So I thought that instead of using Zoom for that, we would use the technology that I'm often forced to use in those situations, which is Google Meet. That's what all the audiences I, I work with have been using. Um, and Google Meet posed tech issues uh, for people who had been doing just fine with the Zoom that we had been regularly using. Uh, so that was that was like on me. I caused that tech issue, um, but it's it's hard when we are all of us in doing instruction online. We are so often at the mercy of of technological decisions that other people make, and it's really tricky to figure out how to navigate that. Yeah. 
if that is all of our questions for now, uh, I'm going to pass things back to the co-leads who um, I think can answer any other logistical questions and also wanted to make time at the end and going into the break to deal with any Zoom questions that folks might have since so much of the next two days will be happening on Zoom. So thanks everyone for listening and participating in this conversation with us. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, I know all of us um, who have been involved with those calls and know all of you, it was so rewarding and inspiring to listen to all of you talk. I know I um, had a couple of, um, I'm just proud of all of you guys.